The Smithsonian Faculty Fellowship Program represents a rewarding academic professional development opportunity for faculty at Montgomery College. The fellowships are a product of a unique collaboration between Montgomery College and the Smithsonian Center for Learning and Digital Access. It's the first of its kind between the Smithsonian Institution and a community college. Professor Jarek Michalinik has taught at various U.S. community colleges over the years. His formal training encompasses English, applied linguistics, and composition. His research interests include cultural and identity in a multilingual composition classroom, immigrant perspectives in contemporary American fiction, global citizenship and English education, among others. He is also a freelance music journalist with a major focus on American female jazz vocalists across generations. He is fluent in Polish and Russian and has a background in translation. International travel and cuisine, as well as photography, are some of his favorite hobbies. Welcome, everyone. I, I'd like to take a few minutes to thank uh, this wonderful program, uh, Sarah, Mimi, Denise, um, Philippa, for allowing us to um, discover worlds never discovered before and to help, I believe become better teachers and educators. And um, also wanted to thank my wonderful cohort and your collective genius for allowing to inspire me and do things I've never done in my teaching. So thank you for that. Um, this is the title, the theme of my um, adventure with the Smithsonian, Stories Without Words, Decoding American Identity Through Portraiture. Now, I originally, when I, when I applied for the Smithsonian, I wanted to do it um, in the context of my composition class, advanced composition. And then when this started, the class got canceled, and I was like, wow, what am I going to do right now? So maybe there was a, there was, it was a blessing in disguise, because I, I, for the longest, been trying to become a better reading teacher, and I went to TESOL the same year, and I went to every single reading workshop, and I felt I was... I left hungry. I didn't think, I mean, even though some of the workshops were great, I felt like a lot of the stuff that I heard um, was pretty much recycled and the same. So this was pretty much uh, challenging So uh, for me. So um, the course that I um, did it um, within, the context was the uh, ELR 980 which is our advanced reading class uh, that focuses on teaching American English, um, um, yeah, academic reading of American English, and the focus is on all kinds of texts, like novel, fiction, nonfiction, paragraph, and essays, and whatnot, media analysis. So that was nothing new to me. Now, the question that, the, the challenge that I have is, how do I bring in the Smithsonian into it, the museum at, as a research site, um, into a reading course? So that was challenging, and I decided to go with the um, National Portrait Gallery and the uh, 20th Century Americans and Contemporary Americans exhibitions for a number of reasons, which you'll understand in, in a bit. Namely, because it, it, those exhibitions dealt with um, the evolving identity, American identity, and it tied in with the novel that I uh, was doing at that time, which I will talk about in a few minutes as well. And the, the, the tying... Uh, the, the link between the traditional and the visual aspect of it was treating portraiture as a text, as a story, which was a culture shock to my students. I was like, what? We're going to do this? We have a novel already going to uh, make us do this? So it was, it was interesting. So the, ob uh, the objectives um, were pretty similar to the objectives that you would normally do when you do a novel. You interpret the novel and, and do character analysis, rhetorical analysis, and whatnot. Uh, you'll make informed claims about what you've read and um, doing the rhetorical analysis. To me, uh, what was really uh, most significant about it is that the students, in addition to all this, were able to make really, really powerful, meaningful connections during this process that were breathtaking. So we'll talk about that um, in a bit. Uh, whoops. Okay, so before the visit, uh, since this was a reading class and 
the traditional, and, it, and most of the time in this class, what we do is um, we do introduce a novel, which I did. Um, it was an immigrant novel and identity formation. Um, the novel is called Girl in Translation. It's a story of a Chinese immigrant arriving in Brooklyn. And, and so this to me was a portrait as well, except it was traditional. So we went through a lot of uh, reflections to conceptualize identity, American identity. A lot of my students are immigrants. They're new to this country. They don't know much about American culture. So we started with the personal uh, reflection. Who am I? Uh, what, what are the signifiers of my identity? What's, what's, the, what's my purpose here? Uh, then investigating American culture and values. This is a big chunk of work, defining American. And I went with photography. I, I, I'm a big, big fan of Walker even. Diane Arbus, Gordon Parks, and Robert Frank. So this analysis gave him uh, sort of a preliminary understanding what is American and American culture. It's a culture of contrast and whatnot. And on the bottom, um, it, was, it was a very chunky part of the course, about two months of workshops where students actually were equipped with a toolkit, including language, uh, language uh, critical thinking, communication skills, to tackle, to grapple with portraiture. So the reason I put in this, does anybody know this portrait, Afghan girl? This is our culminating moment. When we did the analysis of it, they really got into it. Uh, they were very perceptive of it, uh, very inquisitive. And at that point, I knew they were ready for the visit. So um, when we got to the um, museum on a Saturday, uh, we had uh, a curator um, accompany us, which was very, very nice. This is Saturday, but you, you can't ask for it. They were very, very, very generous. She gave us about 45 minutes of a tour of her own. We looked at different selections. Um, I didn't impact that in any way. Um, students were really engaged. They were asking questions, taking notes, taking pictures. And then after that, um, we went in, and I gave them about one hour to wander around, and they took ownership of this museum. They, they basically vanished and then re-vanished, came back to me, asked questions, what now they were really engaged. So, um, okay, so um, the project that I assigned was a 10 question um, paper, I should say, that involved questions like, um, what do you think the sitter was thinking while she or he was being um, photographed? Um, if you were in the portrait, where would you be and what would you be doing? There was a lot of vocabulary questions describing the, describe the mood or the tone or the atmosphere um, and personal connections. Also, what makes this portrait in your mind American? So these are some of the things. The, the, uh, one of the portraits that I really love, is actually it's a photograph, it's um, Apollo 11 crew, and this is what a student wrote. I connect to this portrait as a fellow American. To me, this portrait means victory, success, and being American. If, I, if there were one thing I could change about the portrait, which was one of the questions, I would add a Russian spacecraft in the background with smoke coming out <laughs> of the engine to symbolize <laughs> Russia's failure to beat the US in the race to the moon. Um, precious. Oh, sorry, I don't like this one. Okay, another portrait that I loved was uh, Denise Graves. That's the title. Um, I, I love her. I mean, she's so underrated, um, based here in D.C., and they were wondering, well, they didn't know who she was, and that was quite okay. What kind of music does she do? You know, is, is she a soloist? Is it a recital? Um, so a bunch of them wrote about it, but this is the quote that really touched me. Mrs. Graves' red dress signifies courage, sacrifice, and the ultimate success and beauty. If I were in the portrait, I would be sitting next to the singer with my guitar ready to perform with her. Almost everything about this portrait speaks to me. The Sid and I are both black, and we share the love, love for music. I feel this is me in this portrait. I've learned, I've, I've learned that no matter what your skin color is, you can be successful if you work hard. Okay. So when this was done, when I read the, uh, the projects, I was humbled because this opportunity gave me not only the opportunity to become a better teacher of reading, but also um, 
give me a deeper insight into who they are, where they come from, and when they're headed. Because they were able to, um, this project actually is a story of empowerment. It allowed them to unleash their hidden potential. A lot of, a lot of times ESL, ESL students have their challenges, mainly linguistic, and we stigmatize them for that sometimes, and that's just not fair. And they were able to do it with a sense of authorship and agency, just like in those quotes that I just read for you. It also established a community where the members strive to create inter intercultural competences and acquire a sense of otherness and also to navigate the unfamiliar social cultural uh, bridges or divides in a very open-minded way. So that was the beauty of the project. So I'm forever grateful. Thank you very much.